We are uh, winding down the day on pre-baiting all the camera sites for our survey and we got all but one done. So, but what we've done today is we've take, taken the Huntera mobile map and before we left this morning we put magnet pins on theoretically where we thought we would like to be with each of these locations starting out down here at the barn and we you know travel down each one of these roads that was giving us our grid position for the camera spacing but as we did it today Howard actually dropped a pin while we stood on the site of where the camera actually is located on this mobile app map so that's the real world location of where that camera is so what we've decided to do was come back to the wall map with our pins and physically move and make those adjustments. We know that camera is right there. That's where it's at. So for our knowledge here on the wall for discussion and for comparison's sake, we are changing those locations to match. Um, a really neat way to just be 100% certain is we're not guessing anymore. That camera sits right, I mean right there. Fantastic way to know. Um, takes the guesswork completely out of it. There is a trail that we cut through there. Looks like I'm just on this side of that dark shaded, that's a deep ravine right there, and we're on just on the left side of it. So right there, that's number three. We've got just a couple more here. Well, this one ended up being down in the timber farther. We decided to get a little farther away for spacing right there. And last but not least, for today. Yeah, we're actually, we're really close where we estimated on that one. So right right there. And we did, did we get this one here on Aaronsville? Did we talk about that one too yet? No. no okay, not. that one did not get done. We've got, we got two left to go. We've got two left to do now. So um, this is just a fantastic way to bring estimated locations to specific real locations and then and then adjust your data points here. But So again, what we're gonna do is run these cameras um, after the seven day baiting cycle of baiting and keeping those locations fresh with corn for seven days. We're gonna clear the camera cards and turn them on and we're gonna collect data for 10 to 14 days. 14 would be ideal. Sometimes it's not possible for every person to do that. Keeping the camera sites um, stocked with corn, cameras running, after 14 days, we take that data, and what we're gonna do, the ideal thing to do, and it's a little bit of a, a, a hassle, uh, admittedly, is to be able to print every one of those pictures. And even if you just print a small picture, and what we're gonna do is, is categorize those into, into basically three, three compartments, doe and fawns, bucks, and then what we're gonna do is identify unique bucks and really study those pictures. And it's, and you know, everybody says, well, those two little six pointers look alike. Look at the physical characteristics of the deer besides the antlers and you know, you'll see difference in eye rings and maybe a notch in his ear and a black mark on his face, a throat patch is a little bit different. Really put the effort in and trying to distinguish the unique bucks. And so you're gonna put those into you may have 20 pictures of this unique buck. You may have five pictures of this unique buck. Taking all that data and, and, and those photographs, determining unique bucks to the total number of bucks to the total number of does and fawns. And because we can't tell the difference between these does and fawns, they all look the same, so to speak, and they don't have the characteristics of antlers that help us distinguish we, the uniques, there is a formula that we will take that's relative to the total number of bucks and the total number of unique bucks that we have that we crunch a couple numbers and we can determine how many unique does that we have relative to the total number of doe pictures. Sounds a little complicated and we're gonna put a graphic up for you guys to be able to take the data that you, that you gather here, enter into, that, into that, uh, those calculations and by the time we're done, we're gonna be able to determine how many bucks how many unique bucks, put them into age classes, and also how many does and fawns. And those proportions can help you determine uh, later on down the road in hunting season, harvest strategies, particular bucks that you wanna harvest, how many deer of each age class that you have, 
And if you're not really good at aging bucks, at least you can lump them into main categories like one and a half to two and a half, three and a half to four and a half, and then four and a half and older. Some guys, you know, it really is difficult, especially in the summer, to determine how, if it's a four, five, six, seven year old deer. It, it, it's, admittedly, it's very hard to do. The reason we're doing this in August is because it's July leading into August, is that we want the antlers to develop to the point of distinguishable characteristics. If you did it in June or May, the antlers haven't developed enough to be able to give you um, those characteristics that you can look at too and say he's different because of that reason or the other. So that's why we wait. But we do it well before season. Fawns are at an age where they're, you know, they've survived to this point. So it's going to give you a realistic total number of survivability and, and uh, percentages that will help us go into the whole, the whole manipulation or the whole understanding of the, of the true numbers of what we have on the property. So let's go to the whiteboard. And again, this is the form that you're going to print off the QDMA's website. It's going to have exactly what I'm going to show you on this whiteboard, but you can take this and print it off at home. Okay, so for our hypothetical example here, let's just say that we took a total of 100 buck pictures. Again, remember, combined bucks, same buck several times, it doesn't matter. A total number of buck pictures was 100 pictures. And by sitting them on the table and looking them over, we determined that out of those 100, we have 10 bucks that we think are are different bucks. Now, if we take the unique bucks divided into the total number of bucks, that gives us a, a population factor of 0 0.10, simply 10 divided by 100. Now that number is really important because we're going to apply it to our does and fawns next. So let's just say in this example we also had 200 doe pictures we apply our population factor of times 0 0.10, we come up with a number of 20 unique does. And again, with fawns, let's say we had 300 fawn pictures, again, times the population correction factor of 0 0.10, that gives us a number of 30 unique fawns on the property. When you're looking at your photographs, if you are not 100% sure that you can identify it from a fawn to a yearling deer, throw it out of the equation, don't include it. When in doubt, throw it out. So just, it's gonna keep your result numbers much more accurate than if you were to guess them and throw them into different lumps, okay? Okay, now we're gonna apply the population correction factor that we talked about earlier. Just remember that if you ran your camera for 14 days, we're gonna use the number of 1.11 to multiply into our number because 14 days photographed 90% of our total deer in research. If you ran it for 10 days, you're gonna use a population correction factor of 1.18. Again, remember, 85% of deer get photographed in 10 days of running a trail camera survey based on research results. So we're gonna bring down our, our number of unique bucks. Sorry about the mistake there. We got 10 unique bucks. We're gonna multiply our 1.11 because in this particular survey, we, we ran it for a true 14 days, and that gives us a total number of bucks of 11.1. Of course, you're gonna say, well, you can't have a 0.1 of a buck. Again, we're rounding numbers uh, to get estimates as close as possible. In our unique does, we ended up with 20 times the correction factor of 1.11, and we ended up with 22.2 does. And with our unique fawns, a total number of 30 identified. That came out to be 33.3 fawns. Now we have some real tangible numbers that we can further apply to buck to doe ratios, deer per square mile and others. But this, now you can start to see for management purposes, it's gonna allow us to make some decisions based on these real true population estimates. Okay, now we're in the home stretch of taking our numbers and applying them into some good calculations here to get real data. The final thing we're gonna do is take our total number of doe pictures from determined from up here and divide it into the number of bucks that we have. So we have 22 does and 11 bucks. Divided that, you come out with two does per every buck. Likewise, we take 30 fawns, divided that into the 20 does from above 
and we found out that we have 1.5 fawns per every doe on average on this property. Finally, we take the total population of all the deer from this column and we came up with bucks, does, and fawns combined. We had 66.6. .6. We multiply that times 640, which is the number of acres in a square mile, and divide that by, which is 42,624 in this particular equation, dividing that by the number of acres surveyed, and I just used the hypothetical number of 500 acres for the survey, and it came out to be 85.25 deer per square mile in the population estimate. So you can see by taking those numbers, this is gonna give us some real data that we can use in our decisions on how we wanna go forward with management strategies, particularly harvest strategies on this property going forward. Hopefully that gives you guys some help. Again, please go to the QDMA.com. They're responsible for de developing this survey and really making it available to us hunters. You can print off this form, which is exactly what we just did on the whiteboard, and take your numbers and plug them into these equations and get things that really matter to you, specifically to your property.